Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub. Yet again, this is another instance of Up For Review. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today, what are we going to be reviewing? The Flash. The latest episode of The Flash, which is called... Anna. Yeah, I can't remember either, but don't worry, it'll be the title yeah. of the video. Now, <laughs> this episode, um, this episode focused on the arrival of Gypsy. Uh, the, yeah, a pretty much, yes. pretty much a bail bonds officer or bounty hunter. Not like a bounty because generally bounty hunters are like you'd associate that with someone who goes and like kills someone and takes them in. But this is like a bounty hunter as in like a bail bondsman that gets them to like grabs them and makes them appear in court alive. So she was after H. R. Wells. What were you pulling vases for? No, yeah. I'm just kinda of like a time cop, right? Yeah. I guess. Is that is that her I think one thing I'm going to figure out is that her job to jump through time finding people, or is that just because specifically this is what HR Wells has done? Um, no, that's her job. Yeah, she goes. She she's like Dog the Bounty Hunter, but she's a beautiful woman. Um, and because I I know there's a comic book character with the same name, but they gave her in this the same powers as Vibe, Reverb, whatever. So like, mm -hmm. um, so you know we kind of had like a dirty secret. So I mean, at least it wasn't nothing like outrageous. It's nothing that can be, um, kind of. Oh no, I was just getting used to him. Now he's gonna be killed or whatever. So I think it was good that he just like, oh yeah, he broke the law, or whatever. Nothing big. It's not like crooked. It's not up to something. It's not on the sly. He's just like a normal guy. And I'm kind of starting to warm it, warm to him because like right at the start of the episode, you had all them sitting on their com like on their computers and stuff, and then like he was talking into he was talking into his pen, like doing his little stories and that proper getting into it like with his vortex scanner and I was just like ah oh, this guy's jokes as if they're like all sitting there like listening to this it was real funny that's what I mean it's kind of it is it, a good character he's a real good character so it, it was, he is yeah he's a lot of fun yeah that's what I mean it's more fun now because like the other ones were serious but this one's kind of fun it's kind of being more is like even though it's kind of useless is kind of not so bad now you it like other people don't seem to be bothered about it so literally the episode was just about gypsy taking him back because apparently it's a crime to travel through universes and it's punishable by death so pretty much to save his skin you had cisco like offer a fight to the death like i mean it kind of came off a little serious, like, look, you jump through time, we're going to take you back to Earth-19 and we're going to execute you for doing it because the punishment's death. Oh, no, I'm going to challenge you to a fight to a death, but really what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock you to the floor and, like, not kill you. I was, like, expecting, like, because you've got the prophecy from Savitar, I was expecting, like, Cisco to, like, ki actually kill her. I know it's, like, a shocker, but actually kill her. And then that's, like, his little dark p descent down the dark path or whatever. So, I mean, just, yeah. the f just the fact he, like, flirted with her, slapped her to the ground, I was just... That was a bit disappointing. I'll be honest with it that It was a one. slightly cop-out, but, I mean... I knew it was going to happen. It's kind of what I saw coming, you know, it's the filler week... Um, even though it, oh, God, yeah. it seems quite a, a heavy subject that dealt with it, there was a lot of comedy in it, so it seems like, you know, it wasn't something, you know, take too seriously. I think she was fun, though. I like, you know, of the, the, the one-off characters we've seen in, you know, I can't remember the first season, but certainly the last couple of years, I think she's been one of the most fun. I thought she had chemistry with this guy. Yeah, I like the flirt, um, and I like Tim being, I like Tim being like kind of put in the forefront because if you look back to last season where when he went to earth 2 with reverb and reverb was like look yo let's join together because you don't realize like your abilities you're probably like one of the most powerful people on earth because of what you can do with your abilities you know what i mean and i think they kind of told him that 
back in Earth 2 and then like really all he kind of uses his powers for is like a little you, you see him like open portals and stuff like that but it's like for someone so powerful it's like he never really uses his powers and they never really give him a reason to and now I think they kind of address that they will look yo you know you got powers actually like let, let's have a bit of a showcase let's see what you can do because I think they're gearing up for this massive battle with Savitar, I think you're probably going to have Killer Frost unleashed, you're going to have Vibe unleashed, and then you're going to have Baza and Wallace, you know, kicking up to high gear. You're even going to have HR Wells kicking it up into high gear, getting the job done. So I think, yeah, because it would be a bit annoy, a bit dumb if you got them in a final fight with Savitar and then you got Vi pulling out all these powers that you never seen before and like like mastering it's like I swear he's only used his abilities like two times and now he's pulling out all these tricks, you know what I mean? Yep, and <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a fine line to tread on this show because it I don't think they want it to be like Arrow where He's constantly surrounded by a team. Although he's obviously the lead, he's still, now he's, there's always got backup. I think they want Flash to be a single hero. And so they don't want Sis to go out there fighting with him all the time. I don't, I don't think they're going to want Killer Frost, even if they make a, a hero, which we have named like Killer Frost, or even very likely. But if they did, they're not going to want her with him all the time. So it's a fine line you got to tread. And with Cisco himself you know he's been kind of more serious recently with the whole dead brother thing so i think it was a fun episode to say him back on the right path getting back to being fun giving back to being a hero um i do think the resolution is quite weak but yeah so yeah. here's here's my master strategy for taking this girl out what we're going to do is we're going to wait for her to uh, be an inch off the ground and then that's her undoing a quick whack while she's in the air and then it's all over. I thought that was that was kind of whack, yeah. i tell you what was really good that surprised me, how good they were as well. But Julian Albert, you know, he was fire, he was, his like personality was firing off the one-liners and like deadpan stuff. I thought it was great. I thought it was real funny. Yes. I will say, I will say, I think he has a place in a team which I yeah. didn't think he would. That's I what thought, I mean. You know, when he... But last week when he joined the team or tried to, my concern was I don't see a place for him. I don't really know what he can bring to the table and no one else does. Yeah. But this kind of showed that what he brings is the ability to say the thing that should be said but no one really wants to say. Yeah, and kind you of know, like, is like logical like you know what I mean where it's just like oh yeah I've got to be this fast to like get the to get Savitar and then he just walks in and is like like it, it, it's impossible look you're way off you know what I mean and he was working with the diagrams and stuff and like right. where and with HR HR it was a fair point that maybe it would have been a good idea to let him go back yeah you know even if it's not the right thing to do you've got to put it on the table yeah. You've got to consider it, and if, if no one else is willing to say it, then is that is world person. is like the common sense, if you will. Like all the other ones are kind of hopeful, and that's like, if we do this, it's going to work out. Hopefully, blah blah blah. But it's like, look, this happens, this will happen. It was good as well. Like when they're all congratulating Cisco and that, and they're getting getting excited that he defeated Gypsy, and it was just like they were like, oh, that was great, wasn't it? And he was just like, yeah, she probably just had an off day. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was that was good. That was that's what I mean. You see him kind of his interaction and stuff like that. I'd kind of like him to stay like that you know what I mean I don't really want mm. him to be like because then he just becomes like he becomes Caitlin really he begins he becomes yeah. too much like her or he becomes on this flip side is too much like um Cisco or even like Han ha Harrison Wells like really like a kind of uh lesser version of Harrison Wells you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Like proper, proper yeah. I, de I, de I definitely think he fits in the team. I'm still not convinced he's going to be there in the long term, though. It, uh, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, it'd be good if he was, if they if, if they worked it and it was, but I literally think it's just kind of going to be a matter of time before he ends up putting on his mask or something like that, because as it was hinted at, you know what I mean, Barry made a reference to, they're still like, they've still got a kind of work out what's really going on with Sabotar because he's saying that Barry trapped him and as a result he can only materialise through the Sorcerer's Stone but it's like that still hasn't even been like you don't even know how that happens yet but I think that's probably going to be like a penultimate episode kind of thing where they drop all that it's all everything's like revealed and then they go up against it in the last episode but I, I kind of do think it's going to end up kind of turning as soon as that stone rematerializes you bet your bottom dollar is going to grab it and that's it which is a shame because like in the next like few episodes we're probably going to cut all the viewers are probably going to kind of come to like him. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Because like, being in the team, it's a good mix of his like bastard personality, how he kind of was when he was at uh, CCPD, just like mugging Barry off and stuff like that. It's like a good mix between like that and like not an arsehole. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm not... I think it's doomed. I think anyone who will hook up with Caitlin in the end is doomed. <laughs> um, this episode, you know, the episode was pretty Barry light, really. Yeah. I suppose. One thing the that. Next person. One. Yeah, I think they kind of wanted to, like, push, like, other people to the forefront. My issue yeah. was, which is kind of going to, like, I feel it's going to annoy me, is that it's kind of being a bit, like, overprotective a bit controlling when it comes to Iris now with this news, like, more than, like, last week. It was kind of weren't so bad last week, but now it was just like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then you got Iris running off doing this dumb stuff. Just like, it's like, I don't die till the future, so I'm just going to do this, like, re real kind of irresponsible stuff. And then you got Barry, like, go it going off on one, like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yo, Barry, you're turning into, like, a yenta. You're turning into, like, some gossiping old woman, like, you can't do this, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's just going to yeah. kind of take them back to will they won't they because they're going to end up falling out or it's going to be like at the end of the episode it's going to be like oh, I'm so sorry I treated you this way I should have I should have known you were better than that oh please forgive me like they're doing all the other shows you know what I mean have them like fall out for half the episode and then make up at the end it's like you've been there done that next I think I think Iris is testing the limits I think she's been freed out with the fact she knows she's going to die yeah so she keeps agree. trying to push it. I think it was unfair to drag Wally into it. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting how, like, one minute they're, like, all kind of, oh, about, oh, Wally, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be with the powers and stuff, and then you've got, like, him training with Wells, everyone kicking off and that, like, oh, you can't be, you're doing this behind people's backs, blah, 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 and then, like, a couple of weeks later, you got Iris, like, oh, yeah, 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 let, let, let's go out, don't tell anyone, let's keep secrets, you know what I mean? It's like, which way is it? You know, you can't keep secrets from them, but you can keep secrets from them on the sly. So, I mean, that's a bit convoluted. Yeah. It is, but I think her behaviour is, at least for now, justified yeah, by it's... how freaked out she probably is. Cry for help. Um, I thought it was kind of obvious how Barry kind of goes to him at the end. Like, I'm not going to save her from Savitar. You are, because they keep... Like, every episode, they keep dropping out how, how Wall is, like, getting to be as fast as Barry and how, like, advanced he is compared to how Barry was and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, you've said this... You say this, like, twice an episode, every episode. We get it, you know what I mean? So for him to come at the end of the episode and be like, like, you, you have to be the one to be fast enough to save her was a bit, like, obvious and that kind of plays into the thing where it's going to be like a free-for-all you know what I mean it's not just going to be Barry and Savitar it's going to be Caitlin Wells like every single episode when they fix the kind of you know because last episode they fixed like they changed something then you had HR up on the roof then like next episode they'll fix something you'll have Cisco in the alleyway you'll have Killer Frost starting behind the park bench and then you'll have Wally like in the bins that that's pretty much what they're gonna do. So I think they're kind of foreshadowing the fact that it's literally gonna be at like ten on one. 
Which I suppose makes yeah, sense. That would be pretty decent. I think so. It's kind of like a, a Where's Wally kind of thing of each character as we go on. You know, every, <laughs> every week or every couple of weeks we're going to see where everyone is at that moment. Um, it's a good question where Wally is, though. <laughs> Literally. So you you got to imagine, sure, if I was them, that's what I'd be asking. If I was... The uh, first, first thing I'd do is I'd sit around thinking, is where are everyone at this moment in time? I know we don't know when it happens exactly, but surely a question would be asked would be, why isn't Wally there? Um... Yeah, I think that would kind of happen now. That's the kind of... Now is Barra's gone up to him and been like, look, you need to be the one to save her. Now Barra's actually going to be there. But I know what you mean, like, why wasn't he there originally? Um, mm. Don't know. Pro probably had better well, things to do. We'll find out. Probably had a drug we'll race out. or something. I'll tell you what was good as well, was, like, the fight in between... Because now I can see, like, in the final fight between Savitar, like, Vibe opening a portal, Wally zipping out and grabbing the girl, uh, Iris, and then going into another portal and be, like, gone. Because that way you're faster than Savitar. Savitar can't catch you then. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, the visuals when uh, Gypsy and Vibe were fighting, where they were, like, going to all, like, the different worlds yeah. and that. I thought that was damn good. That looked real nice. And then, obviously, it had a little throwback to National City, even though, like, no one was in, like, Jimmy's office. I mean, they could have had him sitting oh, at the desk. Yeah, they kind of went to Cent uh, Earth. I can't remember what Earth hers is. But, like, um, yeah, they're, they're in Catco, weren't they? They're in the newspaper office. And then you had the blonde girl divering about, like, oh, this town keeps getting weirder. And then he dashes him, he, she dashes him over the sofa and they, like, go through to the, like, volcano, wherever that was. So I think yeah. the cool fight. Yeah, that's what I mean. E even though it was pretty like, not like a massive fight. You know what I mean? Like Barry and Savitar or whatever, or like normally how it is when they're fighting. But to be like a B-list fight and still look pretty decent, I thought that was kind of cool. So. I mean, what other plot points? There was like the like really terrible like innuendo with. Joy West and like the captain, do you know where he's like, oh, long and hard, and she's like, oh, 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 oh. and they probably make a reference to it, and it's like, yo, what are you doing? This is a family show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I thought that was outright. I was kind of shocked by that. I was like, why the hell did they just do that? They've never even come close, like in any of the shows, come close to like doing something like that, and they kind of did it, and I was like, yo, what's your problem? Um, so I mean, I think it it, it was it, it offended me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I was like, "There's literally no need for that." Like, what are you doing? <laughs> if I was Iris walking in on that, I'd be like, "Yo, what? Nah." <laughs> I thought it was outrageous. Uh, do you think there's anything we've missed? I don't think so. I mean, this week was, you know, like I said earlier, it's pretty much a filler, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, no, no big plot developments this week. I mean, it was solid for what it was, but just kind of a stop gap until the next Avatar, Avatar episode, I guess, or Gorilla Grodd or whatever we're going to get. Yeah, I figure Gorilla Grodd will be next. That'll be pretty decent. I've missed him. Now, that'll be a good fight. You know what I mean? So, I think, for now, it's kind of... Barra's kind of taking a back seat. You could kind of... Even then, it's like, oh, yeah, Kid Flash getting all the... i tell you what kind of annoys me. Now I think of it. I'm sick of... I'm sick of hearing Kid Flash. Like, uh, it's like, can't they change his name to, like, someone else? No. I mean, I could, they could call him Impulse, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I mean, because I'm sick of them going, Kid Flash, Kid Flash. And then you see the, the people cheering in the streets, like, Kid Flash, Kid Flash, and the cheerleaders. I was like... Can't you call him KF or something? Just stop. Cut. I'm I'm sick of like mm -hmm. every other sentence. Kid Flash. Oh, you know. Oh, it's so they great. are they are going in pretty. Sorry to cut you off. They are going pretty heavy-handed on the everyone loving Kid Flash thing. So it's got to be leading to something. Yeah. So like, uh, I know, but you can tell kind of Barry's taking a back. I think 
Barry's kind of had this plan for a while. This is probably like he's probably watched the show on like DVR and been like, "Yo, they keep referencing how fa- how much faster this guy is. Maybe I should get him to say virus." You know what I mean? Uh, like give him the. I think he's like giving him confidence. I think he's got this idea in his head and he's had it for a while. Now he's like, "I'm gonna give him the glory. I'm gonna make sure he's the centre of attention, and then he's gonna keep getting hyped off it, and then eventually he's gonna be able to do the job." Now. Now. Because it's at a point though, isn't it, where I don't I don't think they're going to kill him off. You know, I wish they would, but I don't think they're going to do it. See the problem. But it's at a point where Joe is happy for him to be Kid Flash. Iris is happy for him to be Kid Flash. Barry doesn't seem to have a problem that he's faster than him. We got all the cheerleaders all jumping around happy. They're building it up so much that it's got to go wrong. Yeah, I think it'd be better. Uh, I know they're building him up for a fall and that. I think it would be better if he turns, if he's like traitor, if he goes front page. I think it would be better if he t- if he, his ego gets too big, he gets too light, his head gets too big and he ends up like turning into a villain. I think it would be way better that than having him having him killed off. You know, I, I just don't think they're not going to do it. I don't think, you I know, think they it, like their family dynamic and he is Wally West. Yeah, the, which uh, which is why it'd be better. Reason. It'd be more shocking because you've got like you you're gonna have uh, the guilt of Barry as a kind of mentor. You're gonna have uh, Joe and Iris fall apart. Joe maybe more because he's the actual father. You're gonna have Iris a bit iffy about it. So I think it's gonna have. If they're going for like damage wise, it's gonna be more damaging for him if he turns than if he gets killed off. It'd just be like it is just like it'll be more of a consequence for him to go evil than to have him like whatever like dead. Right, but I don't think it I don't think it'd be either. I think if I had to guess probably what they're gonna do is something similar to last year with Barry, you know, when he got uh, pretty much destroyed by Zoom. I think they'll probably do some missing little Savitar and Wally. See, where, where, when you see Savitar talk about fate worse than death, that could be like you could take you could take Wally's speed away. You know what I mean? You could have him yeah. lose his speed, but actually instead of like the Flash getting it back every five minutes, you know, have him have that rush, have him get built up so much, only for his speed to get taken away and for him to become very bitter, very angry. <sighs> Right, but then he's kind of be spinning his wheels on the show. I think maybe they trapped him in the speed forces, I think. Yeah, that would be pretty good as well. Because I think if you're going to go shocking, like it, like big thing of consequence, if you kill him off, you're just like, meh, you know what I mean? It's just so easy to kill people off for like being a big shot. But to have them turn, especially to have him turn, you're, you're kind of expecting Killer Frost or Julian to turn. But for him this kind of guy, all the focus is on him, everyone's got confidence and for him to turn like evil that would be like a bigger kick in the teeth and I mean you could have him as a villain for the next season, you know what I mean I mean they're running out of speed just fast <laughs> so they've got, to start, yeah, they are. they've got to start turning some people so um, I think that pretty much covers it, let's talk numbers let's talk digits, what are you feeling for this episode? You know, seven. I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's just, you know, filler. See, I'd probably give it as well, yeah. I'd give it like seven, only because, like, the fight was good. If there weren't no good fighting in it, I'd probably give it like, probably six, six point five, something like that. So, yeah, that much pretty much, that pretty much rounds it up. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And we'll see you in the next episode. Gonna salute, yeah, there we go.